I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 23rd of December, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I've had a lot of people over the years ask a lot about should you rent a car when you're coming to Nicaragua to visit. And of course, if you're living here, you're probably not going to rent very often. You'll probably own a car or you'll be used to public transportation. But if you're a tourist or you're coming to, you know, evaluate the country and you may need to get around some places, see some things that are a little bit off the beaten path, you may be interested in renting a car. So what does that cost? How do you go about doing that? Where do you do it? Like, there's a lot of questions that people have, so we're going to talk about that right after the bump. It's actually been quite some time since I rented a car in Nicaragua. When I first lived here in 2015, I did not have any transportation of my own, and so car rentals were a normal thing. We lived in Granada, where there are rentals right in the middle of town, and it was very easy to rent and get around. It was, however, relatively expensive, but it did afford us quite a bit of freedom. So. The question is, is renting a car right for you? Now, presumably you're a tourist or here in some kind of short-term temporary fashion. If you're living here, you'll have all the information you need, whether you know that you need a car, that rentals are just something you're able to do from time to time and you can fit them into whatever. But if you're a tourist, there's probably gonna be a lot more questions. So Nicaragua in general, let's start with a few bits of information. Uh, in general, driving here is not that hard. It's probably a little bit exotic. If you're coming from like the United States or Western Europe, you're gonna find it slightly different, but nothing crazy. This is an easier country to drive in than most. Costa Rica is very similar if you've driven there. Uh, not a big deal. Panama is very similar. Um, it's not wildly different in the region, but it will be slightly different than the customs you're used to in the United States. So uh, not a big deal. I've driven in Europe quite a bit. That is far more exotic as an American driver than and here in Nicaragua. So in general, if you're a comfortable driver, I don't think the actual driving, even in Managua, will pose much of a problem. Once in a while here in the country, I have hit some really narrow streets that are like nothing you'd see in the US, more like you'd find in a hill town in Europe. They're few and far between. Most tourists would never encounter one. Um, the most uh, challenging thing you're likely to encounter is some areas have nearly impassable roads. They just have old dirt roads that are poorly maintained and uh, driving in those can be a little bit of a challenge, nothing too terrible mostly you just have to go really slow and avoid really big potholes and once in a while you have to turn around if you have a smaller vehicle but in general even the traffic in managua probably not going to be that bad i actually find madagalpa to be probably the hardest place to drive around in the country just because of the hills and the the tighter streets there are a few places in the country because many things are built on hillsides where you may have extreme inclines or declines uh, and those can be a little bit challenging depending on your vehicle and situation. Uh, mostly that's Managua and again, mostly on side roads that you're not very likely to end up on as a tourist. If you live here, you may end up going to one of those places where you would end up hitting that. It's not a normal thing. Before we forget to mention it, if you do rent a car here or drive in general, you don't pump your own gas. When you go to a gas station, you simply tell them to fill it, fill it up. Fill it up? Yeah, that's, you just say full or lleno. Uh, they, everyone uses full to mean full though, so that's all you have to say. Uh, tell them the type and show them a credit card. Generally, that's all you need. They almost always will ask you at the end if you want it topped up. Just say yes, like whatever. Um, and if you say no, it doesn't really matter. But that is what they normally ask when they're filling, you know, how much you want. Just say full, give them a credit card, um, and then make sure you pop the thing uh, if you need to. And then they'll, if they ask an additional question, chances are it is, do you want them to top it off? I always just have them do that so you get extra mileage from the fill up. That's just good to know, just general rule. You don't pump your own gas anywhere in the country. Uh, renting a car here is not necessarily something you need to do because there is great public transportation going nearly everywhere in the country. The people who live here do not rent cars. That is a, basically unheard of. So uh, Nicaraguans, because they don't do that, it means that car rentals are basically exclusive for tourists, exclusive for foreigners, expats, uh, or tourists, and the prices are going to be quite high because of it. There's also a high incidence here of traffic accidents, not huge high-speed death-defying or life threatening accidents under more normal circumstances. Typically it is a much slower fender bender kind of thing, but there's lots of them. This doesn't cause a loss of life, but it does often cause insurance claims on vehicles. And that makes rentals a little bit more challenging. So that automatically raises the price. You 
generally don't need to have an international driver's license or a international driver's certificate or whatever here uh, people call it an idl uh, that if you're in the united states you pick up from triple a it's not a not expensive you should have one it just makes life easier i've never been asked for one here and i have no no information as to any requirement existing for one police have never asked for one a rental place has never asked for one but it's a good thing to generally have as someone who travels outside the united states i recommend that you have one even though they're really annoying and difficult to get and require that you go back to the United States on a regular basis to get. Don't do it just for that, but if you're gonna be in the States, pick one up, right? And I need to put that on my list of things to do when I'm back in March, just because it's handy to have one. If I'm gonna travel from here to Spain, for example, which I love to do, I'm required to have one in Spain. I may be able to get away without it, but it's a pain, better to have it. So that's nice to have. But in general, you can just drive on your North American or European driver's license, no big deal. Uh, rentals though, do tend to be kind of expensive. So because of that, it's worth looking at other options heavily. Uh, public transportation, like I said, goes almost everywhere. This is what most Nicaraguans are going to take. There's a bus system that goes literally everywhere in the country. It is incredibly good. It is how everyone gets around. If you're going to go out to the island, there is a ferry or multiple ferries that go out there. Uh, and if you're going out to like the Corn Islands, you can take boat or uh, flights. Public transportation is really effective here and super cheap. So consider it. I know as a tourist, that can be daunting, annoying, or just not fit into your schedule. I understand. If you like the idea of public transportation, but you really need things to be a little bit more polished for you as a tourist, there are tour companies that run uh, shuttles for many of the tourist destinations in a similar manner, but much more expensive than public transportation. For example, if you're here in Leon, you want to go from the beaches here to the famous beach in the south, San Juan del Sur. If you're going to take public transportation, you can probably do this, and I'm estimating, but for about $5. It'll take you an entire day. It'll require you to go to several cities, make several bus changes, because neither location has a direct bus run. And you'll have to figure out exactly how to do that with asking a lot of questions and do a lot of things in Spanish and spend a lot of your day standing around bus stations in Managua. So it's not ideal, but it is very affordable. People who want to do that, they're taking a family vacation, and they're, you know, you You've got four kids and you're, you're Nicaraguan and you're trying to you know keep a low budget that's how they're going to do it and make it affordable so they're actually actually able to go but if you're an American tourist you have uh, some money to spend because you're on your vacation you're trying to keep things moving along and you don't want to lose an entire day to that there are things like the Ashimche bus, which is the one I use, but others exist too, uh, which just have a uh, small van or, you know, 15-seater van, and they go basically direct, not exactly, but basically direct from Leon to San Juan del Sur. Just as an example, there's buses all over the country that do things like this as well, but these are tourist destinations, so you're able to zip right from one to the other. Now, you've got to pay a lot more. I don't remember the price, but it's at least uh, $15, and I think it's actually more like $45, but check with them, and the prices will vary on every location and every trip, so I know it's enough more that I don't do it regularly, but if I need to get somewhere quickly and I don't want to drive, it's a great option. They pick me up at my house. I pay a premium. They take me exactly where I need to go. They drop me off at my hotel. I don't have to deal with anything on either end. That's worth it sometimes. And they're very comfortable. And if you need to stop at a bathroom along the way or whatever, they're generally happy to do so. Those kinds of things are very nice. I have taken that bus both to San Juan del Sur, as an example, and to Ometepe to the ferry to Ometepe. I've also taken it all the way to Guatemala. So I've been to four countries with Ishimche and I've had great experiences with them. I recommend them quite a lot and they originate right here in Leon. So they're handy for those of us who are based here specifically. Get to know your own local ones in different parts of the country. Or of course, get down in the comments and ask in there. We have lots of viewers who live in different parts of the country and be happy to tell you what they have experienced in their local cities as well. Public transportation is a great starting point. Well, let's say even the Ishimche buses, you know, that may be affordable, but you still would like a little bit more direct service. Maybe you want to go someplace not on their path or you want to go someplace completely unique. It's worth considering in many cases, hiring a driver. Now, Nicaragua is not that big of a country. So in many cases, getting a driver that's able to take you places is not as bad as it seems. Time frames to go places can be pretty long because traffic moves slow and you often have to move through major connector cities like Managua. If we're going from here, Leon, down to San Juan del Sur, we can now, but only recently, bypass Managua and only by a little bit. There's a new bypass that went in. But if you're going anywhere else, you probably have to go through Managua itself. And that can be a pain, just crossing the city, dealing with traffic and all kinds of things. So because of that, you tend to move kind of slow over long distances. And that means that you tend to spend your time as time in a vehicle, not wear and tear and mileage. Because of the natural factors of cost here in the country, most of the cost 
of a transit for the day is actually in the vehicle, not in the driver. If you're going to rent a vehicle, this means you have to do your own driving. It means you have to do your own navigation. Of course, you can use Google Maps or whatever, but they're not the best here. They do work for the most part, but you'll definitely notice a quality drop off compared to Kansas, for example. I just used Google Maps to give me directions in Managua just a few days ago, and uh, technically on the day this show is for, if you watch my shorts, today is the day that I drove to Managua, recorded all the episodes where I was in the car, and went to see uh, our friend uh, Marcella's daughter, Valentina, uh, do her promotion uh, in middle school. Uh, so all that that you saw in my shorts or in the, the, the old stuff, that all that is today on the 23rd. And so in doing that, uh, Google Maps got every single turn of getting to where I needed to go to do some holiday shopping wrong it kept turning me into walls into closed roads into wrong ways had kept thinking i was on the wrong highway stuff i could deal with it's very frustrating especially if you don't have a human navigator overriding the google instructions to tell you wait i'm looking at a map don't do this thing it can be just that much more challenging and when you're on vacation and you don't know the areas that you're going to that can be a real negative that maybe you don't want to put up with and of course in recent episodes we've talked about things like the police stops that happen here in the country and how that's really a pretty good system i like it in general i don't have any complaints about it but as a tourist if you don't speak spanish fluently and sometimes even if you do these stops can be a bit unnerving and if something does come up and some people have reported some problems at these stops it's very infrequent but it does happen i don't know uh you know which which reports of stories are current which ones are true whatever but that they happen from time to time yes there can be problems just like there can be anywhere i've certainly had some really terrible traffic stops in the united states where i was definitely very afraid for my life so, and that's, I've never been afraid for my life here. So I've never had as dramatic problems here as I've had in the United States, but I've had problems here as well. So uh, now it's been a number of years, but it has happened. So that even if nothing goes wrong, having to go through police checkpoints can be unnerving and unpleasant. If you're a tourist and you've never had to deal with it, that may not be the kind of thing you want to deal with on your vacation or while you're searching around or just ever potentially. So there are good reasons why you may not want to drive yourself around and when you actually look at the cost, now it's been a while since I've compared the cost, but in general, what I find is that if you're going to rent a car here, a car of any quality whatsoever, meaning that it's reliable and you'd actually want to drive it, and by the time you put insurance on it, remember, you really got to have insurance here. Now, if you have uh, car insurance from the U.S., maybe they'll cover you internationally, but generally not. That means you've got to get insurance from, uh, maybe your credit card has insurance, a lot do. I know quite often the American Express or the Chase Sapphire, I'm pretty sure the, the Capital One Venture cards, those are going to have that kind of uh primary insurance coverage when traveling internationally, but definitely check your plan. I can't speak to it and they can change over time. I know that some of the cards I have do have primary coverage when you rent internationally, not in the US, which is crazy. Um, but, but certainly you need to check that and determine for yourself. But in many cases, you might wanna have the insurance anyway, because there is a lot of just complications dealing with car rentals in another country. You can make those decisions yourself, but things to think about. Once you end up paying for the car, paying for the taxes and all that, now you're left on your own to drive around, which can be fun. Some people just really like that and nothing's gonna be more fun than doing that. And that's the reason you're here. So great, go enjoy that, have a good time. If that's who you are, rentals are definitely the way to go for you. They're not scary. They're not crazy expensive. They're they're not something to be avoided, nothing like that. So if you want to do a rental, if you will find that enjoyable, affordable, and it's, it's a good way for you to spend your vacation, absolutely go for it. And we'll get to more information about that shortly. But if it is not, if that is not your goal to drive, you're, you're actually worried about the driving, it may ruin your vacation for at least the driver to have the stress of having to deal with it. Going through the police checkpoints is gonna freak you out. Um, you're worried about your navigation being bad, whatever. Consider, instead of renting, it is sometimes the same, or more importantly, potentially quite a bit cheaper to hire a driver who has a car. Now, this can vary and it depends on what you wanna do. So you'll have to play around with your own other things. And of course, get down in the questions, uh, just scroll down into the comments and ask your questions. We can talk about specific cases as to what may or may not make sense. But let me give you an example. If I'm coming from here in Leon and I wanna go down to San Juan del Sur for the weekend, 
I could do a couple things. I could rent a car. I could, of course, take public transportation. We're just gonna assume I don't wanna do that. I want some flexibility. I want to drive wherever I want for the next three days. If I'm gonna rent a car, I bet I'm gonna end up paying somewhere between $120 and $150 per day for that car. You could get good deals, but in general, you're not going to. The prices tend to be pretty high, and that's not the kind of thing that comes down or goes on sale. So I'm looking at about $150 a day. Well, what could I do with a driver? If I hired a full-time driver for three days, chances are I could get that driver for between $110 and $120 per day with the vehicle. Now, I'm gonna need to pay them for them to stay in a hotel. I'll have to feed them some meals, so it's gonna cost a little bit more. So you can see pretty easily though, if I put them in a $20 hotel and give them a $20 a day budget for food, work out a deal with them, talk to someone. Now, of course, you gotta find someone you trust and all that, but you may have a car and a driver for about $160 per day. And if you do that, you don't have to worry about the insurance, you don't have to worry about the taxes, you don't have to worry about the navigation, you don't have to worry about the driving. Any of those things, you have someone that takes care of it. And someone who speaks Spanish and knows the roads, knows where they're going, knows how to avoid problems, goes through the right towns, doesn't, you know, all that kind of stuff makes your life much, much easier in many cases and then you have them at your beck and call and you can enjoy going out on the town. You can go have drinks. That's another thing. Drunk driving is taken very seriously here. If you're used to being in the US, having two or three drinks and then driving home, maybe after waiting a little bit of time here, I would recommend not doing that. I mean, I don't recommend doing that in America either, but in America, it's generally legal here generally if you were to get pulled over, even if you did, remember, even if you're a perfect driver and do nothing suspicious, you may go through a checkpoint. And there are times we have 100% check checkpoints, meaning there's no chance you're gonna make it through. They are gonna pull you over. They are gonna breathalyze you. That happens. Paul just had it happen the other day, went down the beach and they did 100% breathalyzers, right? He was fine because he doesn't drink when he goes out. But if you do, even one beer could blow enough to have a very bad night at best. So it's recommended that you just maintain a zero tolerance for yourself. If you're going to have a drink, make sure you have a driver walking home or whatever. And in most cases, you can walk home from nearby bars. So it's not as big of a problem as it seems. But if you want the flexibility of going out to dinner anywhere you want, having wine with dinner, having a beer, going out for rum and coke, a Nica Libre, as we often call it, we'll explain something about that in a future episode. But all those kinds of things, have the flexibility to do that, why not have a driver? Right, they're gonna be able to make that trip in most cases possibly cheaper and definitely way more satisfying and stress-free and fun and enjoyable than it, under normal circumstances if you're gonna to have to do all that driving. Again, if you love to drive, great. And there are cases where you just, I just love driving, I wanna put my camera on the windshield, I'm talking about myself here, and I wanna feel the wind in my hair and I wanna be in control and I wanna pull over all the time and get out and run out with a camera and take pictures. And do you're a photographer, you're a pro photographer, and you wanna be able to do that, you may not want a driver, right? Driving yourself is gonna give you a lot of flexibility. However, as a photographer and videographer, I actually really like having another driver because it lets me spend my time focused on the cameras, looking at the scenery, knowing when to tell them to pull over and stuff, that may actually work out better. Now, it works out even better when you know your driver. So sometimes I have my own staff drive me around. Sometimes I hire someone that I know well. Um, and sometimes, a lot of times I drive myself because I do own a car. If I was renting, I would hire a driver basically every time because coming with a car just solves so many complications. It also means you can be in a place where you don't have to have a rental car. Where can you rent cars? In a lot of cities, it's actually quite hard. In Managua, it's easy. And I don't know all the locations you can rent, but I know, for example, we use the Hilton Doubletree. I mentioned them a lot. It's my favorite hotel as far as expensive, fancy American style hotels go in the city. And they have the car rental places right in the lobby. Well, that's great. You can just go there whether you're staying there or not and rent a car from there. If you're in Granada, the hotel right on the main square also, at least traditionally, had the rental car place right in it downtown. Granada is the tourist center, so it's gonna have rental cars really easy there. There are car rental places all over San Juan del Sur. You don't need me to tell you where they are, just pull into town, you'll see the signs all over the place. You've got several options, and especially because they're so remote, they're very popular as a car rental location. Um, so. You those kinds of places, you're in pretty good shape. There's gonna be car rentals, and I think they're gonna be about the same price around the country. Probably San Juan will cost a little bit more. If you're up here in Leon, I honestly don't know where we can rent a car. I've never seen a car rental spot in town, um, and most of the cities are in the same boat. I've never seen someone able to rent a car. I've never heard of someone renting a car. So in a lot of cases, depending on where you wanna go, you may be stuck renting from the big cities and the big central cities or way down south, and then driving really far, and then you have to return the car out there. If you have a driver, they can potentially drop you off wherever you need to 
go and they can drive home. They can drive and get you when you start your trip. They can drop you off and then go take care of the car when they're done. So that can do a lot to make the logistics easier as well. And I can get a local driver here in Leon easily, but I can't rent a car here easily. And I can get a driver at a moment's notice at pretty much any time day or night. I can pick up day or night. I can pick up the phone and call someone. Now, obviously I live here. I have more flexibility than someone who's trying to find someone without knowing them. But as someone who lives here, I can just pick up the phone and find a driver with a car probably within 30 minutes, but finding a car rental could take me half a day at least. And I may then have to travel really far to deal with it. So, uh, all those things really make the idea of having a private driver outweigh getting a rental car in nearly all cases. And then there's also the, well, what if you just took taxis? What if you just, there's all these different things you could potentially do. Um, so consider being a little bit creative and saying, well, what if I said I'm not going to rent, but I could use that money in some other way to get transportation. There may be a form of transportation that's available here within your price envelope that's actually just as good or better than renting a car for your needs and just be a little bit creative the whole like i'm going to rent a person with a car to drive me around for the next week and i'm going to put them in a hotel and uh and just pay for their food and stuff that may end up just fantastic and some people hire me to actually do that i can drive people around uh and i have a car so sometimes but they hire me to give tours those things just kind of come with it because i'm driving people around as part of giving the tour but the artifact ends up the same like oh i could rent a car and do all these things or for a little bit more scott can do this on a tour and comes with the driver because he's like it's funny just how those pieces come together when a car rental is so expensive and has so many overheads the insurance and the potential issues when you uh get lost or whatever so uh that gives you an idea the, the price of renting a car is a little bit higher than you would expect i believe it's basically always going to be higher than in the u.s this is one of those places where living in nicaragua transportation is much cheaper than america but specifically car rentals are generally more expensive uh insurance and all those things probably just a little bit more expensive because accidents are just more frequent ones that charge them lots of money for car parts to be replaced uh, but alternatives exist and are very very cheap affordable and flexible they'll probably meet your needs uh, that said there's always going to be someone who needs to rent a car and situations where you may need to do it um, be aware that basically if you're renting a car you're not going to be able to cross any borders you're going to be limited to Nicaragua which means returning to the center cities like Managua or Granada to be able to drop off that car then you got to deal with getting to the airport there's probably car rentals in the airport but I'm not actually positive of that I'm, I'm pretty sure there is but I'm not 100% sure because I've never needed to do that. If you have a driver, all those kinds of things, they take you where you need to go, including to borders. So if you want to get picked up at a border, there are places where you can rent cars at the border, but I don't know how many borders. I know that the um, uh, the southern border with Costa Rica does have car rentals sitting right in the border zone. Um, you're probably going to pay a premium there, though, but maybe if you arrange ahead of time, you'll be good. Uh, but in most cases, I don't think there's car rentals on the Honduran border. So if you want to cross into Honduras, you're going to need to have a driver. There's no way to take a rental car up to the border and drop it off and then walk across, to the best of my knowledge, um, and then to rent on the other side and continue. It'd be very complicated. But if someone's able to drop you off right at the border, which I've done many times, works great very nice and they'll sit and wait for you they can send you their location when they pick you up whatever they can make it pretty flexible so in general my recommendation is think twice about before renting a car don't be afraid to it's much more of a convenience and cost thing than a danger uh, type thing like you really can be safe renting a car here really not a big deal but there are so many alternatives that work so well think outside the box it's a really good chance that those things will work for you um, and the rental companies are basically all the same ones you get in the United States just with lower selection uh, but big US names brands of car rental companies are the ones that are generally available here for car rental there may be local ones I've never considered using a little local one I have no idea uh, if that would be a good idea or not um, but I'm not even 100% sure of who does that or if it's available so expect that it's not uh, but just in case it is not sure I'd recommend it. Um, and I expect the prices would be just about the same. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. As always, get down there with your questions and let me know what you need to know about Nicaragua, travel, tourism, moving, expat, uh, taxes, currencies, uh, houses, places to live, beaches, mountains, volcanoes, lakes. Ask away. And as always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. And I will see all of you tomorrow.